Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. They hid the truth about the prenup, but I found out just in time. Now, I'm fighting to protect my future and my family. I woke up on the morning of my wedding day with a mixture of excitement and nervousness. It was the biggest day of my life, the day I had been dreaming of since I was a little girl. As I looked out the window at the beautiful scenery, I couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for everything I had in my life, including my fiancé. We had been dating for four years, and it felt like a fairy tale romance. He was the perfect gentleman, always attentive to my needs and treating me with the utmost respect. He was also incredibly successful, having inherited a fortune from his parents, who were prominent business people. I was lucky to have found someone so kind and successful. As I was getting ready for my wedding, my fiancé's brother's wife, whom I had only met a few times, pulled me aside. She had a concerned look on her face and told me that she wanted to warn me about the prenup that my fiancé's parents had made me sign. I was taken aback by her sudden warning. I had signed the prenup without a second thought, trusting that my fiancé's parents were just trying to protect their son. But now I couldn't help but wonder what was in that prenup that had my new sister-in-law so worried. As I went through it, I couldn't believe what I was reading. The prenup was about debt. And if we were to ever divorce, my fiancé get full custody of our children. How could my in-laws do this to us? And why didn't my fiancé tell me about this? I immediately called my fiancé and asked him about the prenup. He was completely unaware of its conditions and told me that he trusted his parents to handle everything. He apologized for not telling me earlier and promised to talk to his parents about it. I couldn't help but feel betrayed. I trusted my in-laws and signed the prenup without a second thought. Now I was stuck in a situation where my children's custody was at risk, and I had no say in it. The wedding ceremony went by in a blur. I couldn't even focus on the beautiful decorations or the happy faces of our guests. My mind was consumed with thoughts about the prenup and how I could have made such a huge mistake. During the reception, I couldn't bring myself to smile or enjoy the festivities. I kept thinking about my future with my fiancé and how much control my in-laws had over it. It was as if they didn't trust me enough to make my own decisions and were already planning for our divorce. As the night went on, I couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. I kept replaying the conversation I had with my fiancé and wondering what would happen if we ever got divorced. Would I lose custody of my children? Would I be stuck with debt I didn't even know existed? The next few days were filled with tension and anxiety. My fiancé talked to his parents about the prenup, but they refused to budge on its conditions. They said it was to protect their son's assets and that I shouldn't worry about it. But I couldn't stop worrying. I had signed a legal document without fully understanding its consequences and now it seemed like my future was out of my hands. I confided in my sister-in-law and my husband's brother's wife, who had pulled me aside on the morning of my wedding to warn me about the prenup. She empathized with my situation and told me that I should fight for my rights. She even offered to help me find a lawyer who could review the prenup and advise me on my options. With her support, I decided to take action. I hired a lawyer who reviewed the prenup and told me that its conditions were not in my best interest. We discussed my options and came up with a plan to negotiate with my in-laws when the time came. I sat nervously in the living room of my in-laws' mansion, flanked by my sister-in-law and my lawyer. As I sat there, my husband's frustration was evident on his face. My father-in-law's words were spoken in a low voice across from us. It was then that I realized they were not trying to protect me, their daughter-in-law, but their assets. Their reasoning was that they had worked hard to build what they had, and they didn't want to lose it if something were to happen between me and my husband. My mother-in-law's eyes were brimming with tears as she spoke, trying to justify their actions. My husband, on the other hand, was incredulous. He pounded his fist on the armrest and accused them of being heartless and taking advantage of me. He tried to make them understand that they should be protecting me that I was not a gold digger but his wife, and that we had no plans of getting divorced. The conversation went back and forth like this for a while, with my husband becoming more and more frustrated and my in-laws becoming more and more defensive. I sat there feeling like a pawn in a game of chess as they argued over my worth and the value of their assets. It was an uncomfortable situation to be in, and I couldn't help but wonder how we had gotten to this point. The argument went on for hours, with my husband and his parents going back and forth about the prenup and what it meant for our future. My sister-in-law and lawyer chimed in occasionally, trying to reason with my in-laws and find a compromise that would work for both parties. In the end, it was my husband who wore them down. He argued passionately, pointing out the unfairness of the prenup and how it could damage our marriage in the long run. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, my in-laws relented. All right, all right, my father-in-law said with a sigh. We'll renegotiate the prenup, but you have to understand that we're doing this to protect our family's interests. We don't want to see you hurt, but we also can't just give away our wealth without some sort of protection, my husband nodded, his expression softening. He said that he understood them, 
but he hoped that they could also understand that we were not trying to take advantage of them or their money. He told them that we just wanted to build a life together and be happy. I couldn't hold it in any longer, though. All the emotions, anger, frustration, and hurt I had been bottling up inside me since the morning of my wedding were now bursting out. I turned to my in-laws and started to speak, my voice shaking with emotion. I cannot believe you tricked me into signing that prenup, and that too without letting me take a second opinion, and the audacity to make the custody of my future children a part of it. Are you kidding me? My mother-in-law started to speak, but I cut her off. No, you don't get to speak. You both have been trying to control every aspect of our lives since the day we got engaged, but I will not let you control me, my husband. Or our future children, my father-in-law tried to intervene but I stood my ground. No, you don't understand the gravity of what you did. You not only undermined my trust, but you also tried to take away my rights as a mother. And for what? To protect your son. He didn't need protection. He needed a partner, a wife who trusted him and stood by his side. And I am that partner. Not just an accessory to his life, tears were streaming down my face, but I didn't care. I needed to let them know how their actions had hurt me. I love your son with all my heart, and I know he loves me too. We will work through this, and we will come out stronger but I will not stand for this kind of disrespect and manipulation. You owe me an apology, and you owe my husband and me the respect we deserve, I said a lot more, but this is all I remember in the blur of emotions. There was a moment of silence as my in-laws looked at me, and then my mother-in-law spoke up, saying that they were sorry, and that they had no idea how much this would affect us. They were only trying to protect their son's future. I took a deep breath and replied to them, saying that I understood but that they went about it in the wrong way. I told them that we would revisit the prenup and make sure it was fair to both of us, but they needed to understand that I would not be controlled or manipulated by anyone. I stormed out of the room after that, and my husband followed closely behind. I didn't want to see or speak to his parents anymore. I felt betrayed and hurt by the fact that they would try to take away my rights as a mother. I knew that I had to take action to protect myself and my future children. As soon as we got home, my husband and I sat down to discuss our next steps. He was as angry as I was and promised to stand by my side. We decided to meet with my lawyer the next day and discuss our options. My lawyer agreed that the prenup was unreasonable and that we had a good chance of negotiating a better deal. Update 1. A few weeks went by, and I was still reeling from the revelation of my in-law's true intentions. I had stopped speaking to them. Our only point of contact was the lawyer. Terms were still being negotiated. I had barely slept or eaten, and I couldn't stop replaying the scene in my mind. How could they do this to me, to their own son? I was angry and hurt, and I didn't know how to move forward from this. But then my phone rang. It was my father-in-law. I debated not answering yet. But something made me pick up. He was apologetic and regretful, and he wanted to talk to me in person. I didn't know if I was ready to face them yet, but I also didn't want to hold on to this anger forever. So I agreed to meet with them. My husband and I went to their house, and we were greeted with tears and apologies. They tried to explain themselves and justify their actions, but I didn't want to hear it. I let them know how much their actions had hurt me how much it had damaged my trust in them. My husband was by my side the entire time, holding my hand and supporting me. I didn't want to take any chances. I told them that I wanted it completely gone, erased, and destroyed. I wanted to start fresh and trust them again, but it would take time. It was a difficult conversation, but it was necessary. By the end of it, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. They apologized, and I forgave them. It was a start, but there was still a long way to go. I am absolutely outraged by the way the in-laws treated OP. It's unacceptable that they would trick her into signing a prenup that goes against her best interests and tries to strip her of her rights as a mother. The in-laws are the a-holes here. The in-laws' behavior is nothing short of despicable. To manipulate and deceive someone like that is just disgusting, and to find out on the morning of your wedding day is no less than cruel. It's clear that their only concern was protecting their own interests, and they didn't care who they hurt in the process. They should be ashamed of themselves, and I hope they take a long, hard look in the mirror and realize the damage they've caused. I can't even imagine how OP must have felt when she found out what the prenup actually said. To be blindsided like that on the day of your wedding is a nightmare. It's a good thing that instead of caving in and going along with the in-laws' demands, she stood up for herself and fought for her own rights. I'm absolutely livid with the way the in-laws treated OP. To use their wealth and power to manipulate and deceive someone like that is just appalling. They clearly had no respect for her or her rights and were only concerned with protecting their own interests. It's disgusting behavior.
and they should be ashamed of themselves. I hope that they learn from this experience and never try to pull a stunt like this again. The sister-in-law is a true angel who deserves all the love and gratitude in the world. She not only helped Ope hire a lawyer, but also stood by her side during the most difficult time of her life. It takes a special kind of person to see someone in need and do everything in their power to help them. Next story, when I, 23, female, was 11 years old, my parents divorced. There was no cheating or scandal involved. They just weren't a good match. My mother was very emotional and sensitive, and my father was a rather rational and cold person. My father moved out, and my little sister and I stayed with our mother, who fell into depression after the divorce. She stopped doing the household chores and just lay in her bed for hours after work. So at a fairly young age, I started to care for the house. I cooked, I cleaned, I did laundry, and I made sure my sister did her homework. Since my mother didn't want to lose face in public, she acted as if everything was normal. Nobody knew about her depression. On the outside, she put on a happy face, but at home, she would just cry and lie around. Since I was always occupied with homework or caring for my little sister, I didn't have much time or energy to make any friends. I became a social outcast at school and experienced some brutal bullying. I never told anybody about it. Things got better when I was 15, and my mother met my stepfather. He's an amazing person and helped her get back on her feet and took over the majority of the housework. With this, I was finally able to have some free time and make friends. At this point, I was already functioning independently, and as my mother was getting better, she wanted to actually parent me, which obviously didn't work. We fought a lot. I chose to go live with my father. Even though my father isn't the most loving person, he always made sure I had what I needed and respected me. I've lived there for three more years and got my own apartment when I was 18. During that time, I would visit my mother once or twice a month, and we stayed friendly but never got close. I resented her for what she put me through. Now that my sister has also moved out, my mother and stepfather want to move abroad to a tropical country on the other side of the world. They have planned everything for over a year, sold almost all of their stuff, and are leaving next month. I am genuinely happy for them. Two weeks ago, I found out that I got pregnant by my long-term boyfriend and were really excited. I told my mother, and she started crying because she won't see the baby when it's born or be a proper grandmother because she doesn't want to return to the place that made her depressed. And I don't want to fly around the globe with a baby. This is where I might be the a-hole. I told her it's her decision to move to the other side of the world, and I didn't expect her to want to be a grandmother. She asked why, and I said, because you haven't even been a mother, she tried to defend herself and said she was depressed and couldn't do any better during that time, which is hard. But she could have asked for help and not expected an 11-year-old to do everything. She then called me a heartless bee and hasn't talked to me since. I'm wondering, Ida? I'm kind of torn between NTA and NIH, though I'm leaning more towards NIH with soft NTA you're not the a-hole, because you're entitled to your feelings. She had a job to do and didn't do it and it fell on your shoulders. It would take a lot of shadow work and therapy for you to not have resentments towards her. That being said, as someone diagnosed with depression, I can tell you from experience that it can absolutely immobilize you and mess with your executive function. And as with other mental illnesses, you usually can't see how it's impacting others around you. My main concern, however, is that it doesn't sound like your mother has truly healed from her depression. Between blaming it on a place and her reaction to your very valid feelings, if she was truly doing the work, she would be able to recognize the validity of your feelings and look to work with those feelings to try to rebuild your relationship, rather than throwing a temper tantrum. My guess is that she's still quite depressed, using your stepdad as a distraction, and thinks running from it to some tropical place halfway around the world will be the magic cure that won't require her to put in the hard work. Until she's there and still depressed, then what? Blaming it on not being able to see her grandchild. She definitely could benefit from therapy, but so could you, if for nothing more than helping you process your feelings. I'm going to go with NAH here, and I'll tell you why. Because I've seen things from both perspectives, and they're all bloody horrible. I was also paranoid at 11 when my dad had a complete breakdown and turned into an abusive monster. My mother didn't know how to cope and just shut down, which left me in charge of housework, cooking, and caring for my younger siblings, one of whom is developmentally disabled. I hated and resented my mother for the hell she put me through and cut her out of my life completely in my 20s. Now, in my 40s, one of my closest friends is going through something similar to what your mother experienced. Her marriage broke down. She's a single mom to two kids, one with ADHD, one with autism, and she is barely functional. She's in therapy on meds with some government respite assistance, 
but she hates her life and cries herself to sleep most nights. Most of all, she hates herself for not being the mother she wishes she could be, for her perceived weakness, her emotional instability, etc. She's terrified that her kids will grow up to despise her because of how broken she is. But she has literally nothing left to give and few options to get out of the hole she's in. You were honest with your mother about how she was never a parent to you. And that's fair. You needed to express that to her, and she needed to understand why you've never been close. That said, it's also important to remember that our parents are, were people too. And since we weren't in their heads at the time, we really don't have complete first-hand awareness of the darkness they were battling. That doesn't mean you need to forgive her. I'll never speak to my mother either because I know I can never forgive her for a lot of the stuff she did, nor do I want her in my life. But maybe this awareness can help everyone involved shift perspective a bit if and when we ever find ourselves repeating patterns or being in similar circumstances. Next story, my late mother and I had a tumultuous relationship. This started when I was a kid and diagnosed with autism, worsened when I was eight and my parents divorced, and became further strained when I came out as bi at 16. She wanted to normalize me, and while I appreciate some of her efforts for trying to prevent my disability from holding me back, others feel extreme and disrespectful in retrospect. After I told her I was dating a guy, she said passive-aggressive manipulative things, the worst being when I was in college, that I should date an autistic girl because she would understand me. I told her I'd never date someone else on the spectrum since I already have enough of those issues myself. So the last thing I'd want is for them to be multiplied. And yet she insisted. I still don't get it, as I've met neurotypical people who have understood me and neurodivergent people who haven't, and all I wanted in a relationship was someone to compliment, not duplicate me. Her statement shook me, as if she completely disregarded everything she knew about me to try to control who I was. I went LC with her following college and ended up finding a wife who fit the narrow type of woman I would date. Fast forward to last March mom was diagnosed with cancer and reached out to me. My wife, who'd never met her, but had met my father's stepmother, sister, and half-brother, urged me to reconnect, so I did. My mom knew she didn't have long since they didn't catch the cancer early enough and wanted to spend the last months of her life truly living. This involved reconnecting with me, and we did, including going whitewater rafting together. She passed away a few days before Christmas. Here's the issue. Two days before she went, she apologized for the first time for trying to tell me what I should be attracted to, recognizing that she'd hurt me. I told her that though I enjoyed reconnecting with her and moving forward, I couldn't forgive her for the pain she'd caused me by trying to verbally beat me into being who she wanted me to be. Instead of embracing me for who I am, I said the apology was too little, too late. My dad, who was also in the hospital room my parents weren't on the greatest terms, but he wanted to say goodbye, told me after that it was unnecessarily cruel and that I should have said I forgave her because it's not like she'd know the difference. He's not speaking to me, nor is my stepmom. My sister agrees with my dad but is still talking to me since she understands where I'm coming from. But that doesn't make it okay. I only had a hollow Christmas with my in-laws, and this morning my half-brother reached out to ask if I'm ready to apologize to dad. I feel kind of guilty and don't know if I was right to not forgive her. Was I the whole Reddit? My heart breaks for you. I hope you're able to process those feelings of hurt and live a good life despite it. OP is NTA no one is owed your forgiveness. In time, perhaps you'll feel differently, but that's not a given. Until then, you don't owe the living an apology. They need to deal with their feelings, not gatekeep yours. I think if you're in the situation, saying thank you for the apologies and expressing any positive feelings you may have towards a dying person is the easiest way to get out without without more scars. I saw a quote earlier today which I found quite striking. Truth without kindness can be cruel nevertheless. This was a moment of honesty between OP and their mother, and I can't see much wrong in what they said. This is what the mother reaped with her set inflexibility. I'm not sure why dad is taking this so personally, or why and what he's expecting an apology for. Sorry you had to hear how deeply I was affected by the trauma my mother gave me. Sorry you couldn't protect me more from that. Sorry everything couldn't be tied up nicely and properly, swept under the carpet. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.